Second Chronicles chapter 6, please give it to us so that we would hurry up. Now, this is Solomon. In fact, let's start from verse 1. This is Solomon about to dedicate the temple in Jerusalem. I'll back up a bit and give you a little context. Then said Solomon, the Lord had said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. We're reading down to verse 7. But I have built a house of habitation for thee and a place for thy dwelling. How long? Forever. The key word, I have built. I have built. It did not just appear. I have built a house of habitation for thee. My intention is that it will be a place for your presence to dwell forever. Next verse. The king turned his face and blessed the whole congregation of Israel. And all the congregation of Israel stood, verse 4. He said, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who hath with his hands fulfilled that which he spake unto his mouth to my father David, saying, Since the day that I brought forth my people out of the land of Egypt, I chose no city among the tribes of Israel to build an house in, that my name might be there forever. Neither chose I any man to be a ruler over my people Israel. Verse 6. But I have chosen Jerusalem that my name might be there and have chosen David to be over my people Israel. Verse 7. Now, it was in the heart of David, my father, to build a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. And the Bible says that in doing so, it was a good thing. Are we together? Now let's go and see what happened with David. This is Solomon the son. Having built the temple, he's dedicating it now to the Lord. And he makes reference to the motivation that led to that construction. Are we together? Let's go to 2 second, second Samuel 7. 2 Samuel 7. Let's start from verse 1. The first instruction is from verse 1. It came to pass when the king sat in his house. Who is the king? King David. And the Lord had given him rest round about from all his enemies. Now please look up. Why does the Bible go all the way to tell you the state of this man? It tells you that at the time this man began to think about God. He was not thinking about God because he had problems. God, keep, please keep verse 1 for us. God had given him rest round about. And yet that was the time he remembered God. When God gave his son rest round about, he forgot God. Until he regretted and documented his regret in Ecclesiastes. Are we together now? God gave David rest round about, had no battles, had no need. And yet David said it was never about the battles. It was never about the victory. It was never about rest. It was about my desire for you. Because if it was about battles, I have used you to triumph. If it was about prosperity, neighboring kings have brought their their, their bounty and their gold and everything. I am comfortable. I may not need you again. And David said, even though you have given me rest round about, you still remain my obsession. Next verse. Verse 2. Be patient with the reading. We'll continue now. The king said unto Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of God dwelleth within curtains. What, what a desire. He's saying, look, as I'm sitting down right now, I'm not thinking about my throne. I'm not thinking about succession. Why would I sit down in this beautiful palace and I know that the ark of God, the same ark that brought me victory, the ark that was a representation of the presence of God, is still kept somewhere with curtains. Verse 3. And Nathan said to the king, Go, 
do all that is in thy heart for the Lord is with you there is something in your heart even as a successful man you are concerned about the fact that um, that desire and that longing in your heart the longing that was there whilst you were a shepherd even in the midst of all the achievements now what else do you need you are king enemies have been defeated your kingdom is experiencing peace but david said i still have a desire there is a desire in my heart my desire was never fame my desire was never just to use god and find rest i have found the rest and yet lord you had rest in heaven too round about and yet your heart was on me now you have given me rest my heart is still on you desire pay attention next verse are we still following verse 4 it came to pass that night that the word of the lord came to nathan saying go and tell my servant david thus saith the lord shall thou build a house for me to dwell in that means god was watching from heaven the contemplation of a man's heart and he was saying god i can't sleep i'm a king i have everything but i need to be able to build you a place even in my lifetime and god was revealing to a prophet and said look the desire of a man who loves me verse 6 whereas i have not dwelled in any house since the time that i brought up the children of israel out of egypt even to this day but have walked in a tent and in a tabernacle next verse be patient in all the places wherein i have walked with all the children of israel right it says with any of the tribes of israel whom i have commanded feed my people israel saying why build ye not me an house of cedar verse 8 now therefore so shall thou say unto my servant david thus saith the lord of hosts i took thee from a sheep coat god is giving him the history from following the sheep to be ruler over my people over israel i was with thee whithersoever thou wentest we'll deal with this during our final session and have cut off all thy enemies out of thy sight and have made thee a great name like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth verse 10 moreover i will appoint a place for my people israel I will plant them and that they may dwell in a place of their own and move no more neither shall the children of wickedness afflict them anymore as before time and as since the time that I commanded judges to be over my people Israel and have caused thee to rest from all thy enemies also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee a house we're reading to 18 and when thy days be fulfilled and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers i will set up thy seed after thee which shall proceed out of thy bowels and i will establish his kingdom look what is happening to him he shall build a house for my name and i will establish the throne of his kingdom forever i will i will be his father and he shall be my son if he commit iniquity i will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men uh-huh but my mercy shall not depart away from him as i took it from saul i will put away before thee whom i will put away whom i put away before thee and thy house and thy kingdom listen carefully shall be established forever before thee thy throne shall be established forever according to all these words and according to all this vision so did nathan speak unto david the last verse then went king david in and sat before the lord and said who am i o lord god and what is my house that thou hast brought me thus far look up please david dwelt in peace free from war free from lack and yet David had a desire the desire was that God would find a resting place 
that God would find a place to tabernacle him. And even when God told him, David, I've seen your desire, but you have shed too much blood. I may not allow you to be the one to build. He was not offended. He said, no problem. I will get the raw materials and keep. Let it be that someone who came out of me still builds that house for God. Can I tell you this? The number one factor that controls the manifestation of the hand and the presence of God to come and tabernacle with a man as a covenant is the heart factor, the heart condition of a man. Please pay attention. The heart condition of a man, according to scripture and in my experience, is the greatest determinant of the presence, the power, the grace of God. You've heard me say it again and again. We have thought that the secret to power, the secret to the glory of God is just prayer and fasting and that is wonderful. If your heart has been worked on, every other thing in this kingdom finds its place when your heart condition is right. Can I tell you this? No matter the spiritual activity you are involved with, if this heart factor if your desire has not been screened and edited, you may never hold certain dimensions of God's presence and power. Herein lies the frustration of many people who are actively engaging in spiritual activities but wonder why in spite of everything that I do, I don't seem to be able to carry the level of glory that I desire. Can I tell you this? You don't know if you truly love God when you have needs. You know if you truly love God when your needs are met. That's why the Bible put that scripture there. David had found rest. Do you know what happens to a human when he finds rest? I understand you need God because you need to build. I understand your children are still in school and you need school fees. But there is something about the state of a man's heart when he has no need again. David, tonight our assignment is to obtain grace from God. That impartation of the desire of David, it must come upon your heart that you can look at wealth and riches. You have risen to the highest level in your profession and yet you can come before him and say there is still a desire, oh God. The same desire that was in my heart before I started is the same desire in my heart now. Please do not assume you understand what I'm saying. As simple as this is, if it is the God of heaven you want to walk with, you want to carry power and grace and presence, trusted with influence over nations and territories, beyond fasting, beyond praying, beyond spiritual activities, the heart of man, the greatest factor that invites God to tabernacle with man is his heart. Search me through and through till my heart becomes a home for you. Listen, the desire of David is one that has inspired me and changed my life. Why would a king who had found rest round about sit down and his contempt if I were David my contemplation would not be God oh. may God forgive me but who knows do you know what it means to find rest round about you have estates you have houses all over the world you have accolades to your name you have children who are obedient succession is in place what do I need you for again David said, I have a desire. Prophet Nathan, you are a prophet. Help me tell God I will not rest till I find a place for him in my lifetime. Lord, I will not rest till everything you have given me praise you. Till everything you have given me reveals Jesus. Do you know every time God sees men who are ready to give all to prove him how much they love him, they attract his attention immediately. Now you will understand John 14, 21. Please give it to us. 
John chapter 14 and verse 21. John chapter 14 and verse 21. If you can see it and it's projected, can you read for me? Ready? Read, please. Let's, let's do 23. Let's do 23. One, two, read. Uh-huh. Love, love, love. If a man loves me and keeps my word, my father will love him and we will come. We will come and make our abode in his ministry, in his family, in his life, in his destiny. You will become a walking, living ark, carrying the presence of God everywhere you go. Then your life becomes a sign. Your life becomes a wonder. First to you and then to everyone who cares to see. Can I tell you this? The secret behind the exploits of men, the secret behind the seeming greatness you see, is that covenant. God has found hearts that in life and in death, only live to glorify him you may have heard my story many years ago the Lord spoke to me and said son if you will let men see me there is nothing I will not give you are we together the heart condition in Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 26, it has become an anthem in my life. A formula to host God. Number one, my son. Proverbs 23, 26. It says, my son. What is he asking you to give him? Not your offering. Not your singing. Uh-uh. Leave that one first. Not your prophetic acumen. Not your ministry. You can give God every other thing. But if your heart is not part of it, you've not given him anything. The tray that carries every other gift you carry is your heart. Imagine that you want to give a president something or a governor or something. And maybe water. And you just pick it and throw it at him. That's not a gift. The tray that carries everything and makes everything you present before God honorable is your heart. Are we together now? We're going to pray. Mark 14. A very instructive story. Mark chapter 14. We'll start our reading from verse 1, please. The Bible says, after two days was the feast of the Passover and of unleavened bread. And then all of this happened. The, the chief priests, they sought to put him to death. Verse 2. Mark chapter 14. Okay, next verse. I hope, that's, I, hope I got that right. Yes. Verse 3. Watch this. The Bible says, and being in Bethany. Please look up. In the house of Simon the leper, he sat to eat and a woman came. The Bible says that she had an alabaster box. Everybody please look up. An alabaster box of ointment, of spikenard. Then the Bible says it was very precious. And the Bible says she broke the box. Another synoptic account will tell you it was worth one year's wages. A salary of one year broke the box and poured it on his head and to the point that some had an indignation within themselves and they said why was this a waste that means every time you see this desire you will be tempted to think it's a waste of time a waste of life they called an expression of hunger and desire a waste What is this God thing that you are acting as if you didn't go to school? What is this God thing you are acting as if you are a failure? You already have results. Man of God, God has established you in ministry. 
What is this passion and rolling on the ground before God again? Remember the joy that was in the heart of David when the ark was being restored. He was dancing and dancing and Saul's daughter looked at him and said, shame on you. There are ethics to royalty. You are violating the ethics of royalty. He said, I am dancing before God who took the kingdom from your father and gave to me. God had her and she died barren. I have preached this message for as long as I can remember. Yet surprisingly, people listen, but they never truly get it. That the real secret to power with God, to grace from on high, more than spiritual activities, is when a man gets to a point where you have the desire of David. There is a reason why God made the covenants that he made with David. The heart factor. Vetting your heart to find out, do you still have a desire to see him lifted? To see him glorified? To see him revealed? Do you have a desire for his presence? Most people want power. Most people want miracles. Most people want fame. Hello? Don't, don't feel insulted. Most people. I keep saying it again and again. Most people. Imagine with me, please. Um, one of these protocols. Please come. Come, sir. Let me use you. Look at this fine gentleman standing here. Imagine with me for a moment that this man comes to me. He's been calling me from morning till evening. Apostle, I want to see you. And I tell him I'm busy. And he says, please, I have to see you. It's a matter of life and death. And then as soon as he comes to me, he's not looking at me. All he wants is my shoe. All that call for my shoe. I want to snap your shoe so I look for the kind. I want to snap your watch and I'm standing in shock wondering you did not sleep all through the night calling me now that you have my attention what are you looking at I say look at me and he says no no it's not about your face I was just calling you because I was told that there is a material that you wear that is beautiful Lord, I'm not here to complain about my many struggles. For by your spirit and your grace, I'm confident you suffer. I'm here to say. box she broke it I can waste it if it is before you and he looked at her heart and said everywhere the gospel is preached even though this woman was not ordained into ministry you cannot ignore her because she has communicated her love can I tell you something I know about God there are certain dimensions in God that only genuine 
lovers, those whose hearts have been purged sincerely to love him, not for things. I know we are humans. We need things to be. Some of you here are sick. Some of you came expecting increases of all sorts. But can I tell you sincerely, there are no gimmicks with God. If he cannot find himself in your heart, your heart must reflect his face back to him as a mirror. Otherwise, he does not trust what is there. Don't say I love the Lord. Simon Bajona, lovest thou me more than these? Do you love me more than ministry? Do you love me more than titles? Do you love me more than power? More than signs and wonders? If I tell you to quit ministry now, will you still love me? If I tell you you may never drive a car in your life again, will you still love me? Or is the rolling just because you had a dream and you saw a car? There's nothing wrong with it. But you see, the prayer that God purifies your motif is a real prayer. A genuine prayer. We have a generation of people who love God today and in a heartbeat when God gives them rest roundabout. Why should I come to church again? I've gotten what I'm looking for. Why should I come to church again? I'm now a politician. I'm busy traveling around. I'm now a leader. I'm too busy. I, I will follow online one day. And God says, I knew it. See, God reminded David and said, let me let you know that I've not forgotten while you were a shepherd boy. Now you are king. I have seen the consistency of your desire. Every other thing changed except your desire. Listen, if you want God to bless you, change every other thing except that desire. Change cars, that's all right. Change buildings, that's all right. Change clothes, that's all right. Change approach to ministry, that's all right. But never allow that desire to die. The same desire as a shepherd boy. The same desire as a king. I like to see your glory revealed. Can I tell you this? If I have any fear in my life at all, it's not losing ministry. If I have any fear in my life, it's not losing power. If I have any fear in my life, it's not losing my name or what you call reputation. If I have any fear in my life, it's not untimely death. If I have any fear in my life, it's to get to a point where that presence, where my heart condition, my heart now exalts something above God. You can exalt prayer and fasting above God. You can exalt Bible study above God. The Bible talks about God, but God is a person. You can even exalt heaven above God. You can exalt breakthrough above God. My son, give me your heart. You want to host God? This is the secret. Most of my encounters, I tell you, they did not come because of any effort per se on my own part. There is one thing I can tell you. I sincerely and truly love the Lord. And I desire for his name to be lifted and his glory to be revealed. If ever I pray for power is not to make a name. It's so that God can give me the privilege and the opportunity to be an extension of him to people. Everything starts and ends with him. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love. I love your presence. I love, I love, I love you, Jesus. Listen, if I can get you to a point this night where you are willing to lay down all of the things 
that make you look like you love God but in truth there is an agenda that is locked up. Lord, I am tired of delay. There are yokes in our family. So they say, if I fast, I get your power. Oh yeah, let me fast. There's nothing wrong with that in itself. But if that is what leads you, he will tell you, okay, take, this is what you want. And most people will walk away from him. When David had found rest round about, he still had a desire. Lord, I cannot be sitting here and not build you a house i know that you are god you sit in heaven the earth is your footstool yet give me the privilege of bringing you close to find a place in my life that in life and in death you make up your mind that this thing is not just about church this is not just about christianity i genuinely love you and no matter what you give me no matter where i go my ultimate desire will be to see your glory revealed to see your power revealed in me and then through me to my world if that becomes your desire you have passed the first test that can truly grant a man access to host god very superior dimensions of god otherwise we will just wrap up a conference you will receive miracles you will receive many things and recycle your frustration back to another one year seeking for something that only the size of god can feel god put a realm called eternity in the hearts of man and only his size can feel it a car cannot feel it degrees cannot feel it that is the reason why people become successful and still commit suicide and kill themselves. Nothing wrong with success. Ladies and gentlemen, you have not seen success till God has your heart. You will lay up gold as dust. You will not even know what to do with it. God will take the prayer request of many and give you as a gift. I made up my mind. It was a vow and a covenant with God. I said, Lord, if there is anything whether ministry power if it has the ability to make me lose that presence if it has the ability i rather i rather not be known in my lifetime and yet my love and my passion for him my desire to see him revealed remains unchanged Heaven for me is him being with me. Heaven is not when I fly through the skies. No, if he's not there, I don't want. If he changes his location to hell, then may I never go to heaven again. It is not about the location, it's about the person. It's not about the throne, it's him who sits on the throne. If the throne is empty, what should I do there? I have no business with the throne. You have to understand this. If he's not in the church, may I never have anything to do with church. If he's not in ministry, may I have any, not, never not have anything to do with ministry. If he's not in my prosperity, may I have nothing to do with it. He becomes the epicenter of my pursuit that I desire him more than life. And he says, this is for me. Let's go to the next level. Thank you.